30 times. Ten times more. Two times more. Let it go and stop. So let's say somebody right now is financially back on their heels and they're setting up a new business, for instance, and it's hard. If they can take a few moments or, or minutes each day to reflect on the fact that the effort process is allowing them to climb out of their hole potentially, that it's giving them an opportunity, that it's somehow they are on the right path or, or if they're not in movement along that path or at least oriented on the right path, they're not lying in bed all day. They're taking on their a heels. step. They're forward. taking a step. If they can reward that process internally, two things happen. First of all, the brain circuits that are associated with building subjective rewards and dopamine get stronger. So you get better at that process. And second, and most importantly, dopamine has an amazing ability to buffer adrenaline and buffer epinephrine. And what I mean by that is there was a study that was published in the journal Cell, excellent journal, Cell Press Journal, a couple years ago, showing that with repeated bouts of effort, we use and we release more and more epinephrine. It's kind of adrenaline, but in the brain. With more effort, we're Every time, this. every time you put in effort. So every time you make, let, for this, let's keep it, if I were to keep it in the business context, every time you make, to write that email, every time you, let's see, it's a, a person who's a craftsman or a craftswoman, every time you're working in the, in the shop and doing that, every bit of effort, you're taking a little bit of money out of this epinephrine account. You're spending epinephrine. Now, at some point, those levels of epinephrine get high enough that you, you feel like quitting. It feels exhausting. <laughs> and this was done in a beautiful study, actually, where um, they control the visual environments and they have the subjects ex exert effort. And they can control the visual environment, so sometimes the effort of, of taking steps and moving forward, this is actually kind of pushing forward and kind of swimming motion, um, would give them the sensation that they were actually making progress. <laughs> Thirty times. Ten times more. Two times more. 
letting go and stop. And other times it was an exercise in futility where they would just keep the, the visual world stationary and they would expend effort and they didn't think they were going anywhere. Epinephrine's climbing, 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 and eventually they quit. Now dopamine is able to push back on that epinephrine and give you, anyone, the, the feeling that you could continue and maybe even the feeling that you want to continue. And you've seen this actually, like football is a good example. Two teams play, say the Super Bowl. Both teams are max effort the entire time. Yeah. Max effort. The team that wins suddenly, in a moment, has the energy to jump all over the place, party for days. <laughs> they can talk. I mean, they, they, they have They're exhausted energy. right before right. that. Well, that wasn't glycogen or stored energy of any kind, except it was neural energy. And what happened was effort is this adrenaline, 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 adrenaline. Eventually, people quit. They just quit. The dopamine is able to suppress that. And so then you're expending effort, but you're doing it from a place of feeling like you have energy for it. So we need dopamine to keep the effort going. Is that what I'm hearing you say? That's right. Dopamine is not just about reward. It's one of the biggest misconceptions. Dopamine is about motivation mm. and drive. It's like a jet that propels you along a path. So how, how do we get more dopamine? You practice subjectively releasing dopamine in your mind. Like how? Okay, so th that's a great question. First of all, there are ways you can get more dopamine release through thoughts or through drugs or through supplements. I want to be really clear. There is a drug, there are two drugs actually, that will cause massive release of dopamine. They're called cocaine and methamphetamine. <laughs> the problem That's what is, gets us addicted because it feels so good. The problem is, exactly, the problem is <laughs> do, cocaine and methamphetamine stimulate so much dopamine release that the drug becomes the only source. It becomes the goal of and joy. the path. It becomes the path and the destination. times. Dance more. Two times more. Letting go and stop. And you look at people's lives when they do a lot of cocaine and methamphetamine, and that baseline on their life goes down. Because there's no months. reason to work hard at anything else because you feel good. That's right. And that's the greatest feeling you'll have, so why do anything else when you can have that feeling? That's right. And if you think about, do remember these neurochemical systems, adrenaline, cortisol, dopamine, epinephrine, they weren't designed to keep us safe from tigers and to hunt and gather or to build Fortune 500 companies. They were designed to do anything. They were designed to be generic so that depending on our circumstances, we could adapt. So wow. in an animal context, an animal that um, let's say is hunting or it needs food for its young, it's going to feel agitation. That's stress. That's cortisol. It's like hunger. My babies might not eat. I might not eat. Maybe it's looking for a mate. It's going to feel agitation and start looking and roaming and searching, mm -hmm. foraging. Is what it's called in the animal behavior world. It's foraging. At some point, it might catch a smell of something, uh, a potential mate or berries or a stream if it's thirsty. At that moment, dopamine is released, and now it has energy to continue along that path. Whereas there's a specific pathway in the brain in, that's involved huh. in depression and disappointment that if it goes to that place and it turns out it was the wrong path, 
there's a signal that actually suppresses dopamine so that you don't repeat that mistake again. So you don't give up. That's right. You just don't repeat it again. That's right. And those events that- So it reminds you like, that's not the path to go down. That's right. And, and we're sort of veering towards neuroplasticity here, which is the brain's ability to change itself in response to experience.